This is a presentation of a research prototype for the task of trip detection in event logs. Let's dive right in. So what is a process? It is a sequence of activities that aim at achieving a specific outcome. Organizations record the sequences in event logs by the means of databases and enterprise resource planning systems. One of the fundamental questions that can be asked from this data is to provide transparency of how the overall process behavior looks like. And this question is answered with process mining. So first, let's have a look at the example of the typical workflow to achieve that. This file is an example of typical event log. If we open that file, we are able to see a fine granular information of how the process has happened. This example of the event log is from help desk system. The first column is the identifier of the case. Each case consists with multiple activities that indicate exactly how the things happen in a sequence. Looking at the first case, the first activity recorded was assign seriousness, that proceeds with two taking charge ticket activities and finishes with resolve ticket and close. For each of the activities, the time is also recorded. Already from the second case, we can see that not all the cases are the same. Now we go ahead and use any process mining tool to discover the model of this behavior. In this view, we can see that the most common path that this process was taken was assign seriousness, taking charge ticket, resolve ticket and close. Yeah, well, it's a simplified view. If we want to get more information, we can drag the path slider to see more paths that were recorded. Also, we can use activity slider to find more activities. But when there becomes too many activities and paths, the model of the process becomes simply incomprehensible. One more problem of these models is that they do not show the dependence on time. How the processes run last year and how they run this year might be very different and the model will not capture that. Processes are not stable over time, just like life. Let's illustrate this with an example. Let's assume that we record all processes that happen in one person's life in a college. This timeline represents processes that happen during that time. With green, we indicate processes with one type of behavior, and with red, the other type of the behavior. If you try to summarize though these processes and understand how they in general performed, we must likely lose the red variant of behavior in the sea of green and make the model that is good at representing the green part. Instead, in this variant, when the behavior of the process suddenly changes from one to another, generalizing would prove even more difficult. Doing that, we get a model that is somewhere in between green and red and might at the end of the day represent neither of the behavior. The time when the change happened will also be lost. In case of recurrent pattern, the process will be just switching from green to red and back. And if we do the same, summarizing the behavior in the model, we get again something in between, because the time perspective is also lost. In this case, we look at the process that gradually switches from one to another, but again, same happens. The behavior averages, showing the model that is somewhere in between the actual behavior. These are the most common patterns of change that we call drifts. And for processes, these are process drifts. We aim to get even more information from processes than just general picture of its behavior. Our technique is able to identify what process drift happened, when it happened and pinpoint its exact behavior. In the rest of the video we first present visual drift detection algorithm, then we show how to tune its parameters and at the end we explain how to install the software on your own machine. Let's just go ahead and use the same help desk dataset to discover more detailed behavior. For that we need to provide an event log in a CSV format sorted by timestamp to our command line tool. Specifying case ID column and timestamp column, the rest goes with default parameters. After the script finishes execution, we can go to the folder graphs produced and find a newly created drifts map. One can read them from left to right as time axis goes, and from top to bottom to see the clustered behavior. 
Having a drift map, you can see how much change is present in the whole process. Those white horizontal lines help you to focus how many different changes happen. The difference between blue and yellow shows how radical is the change. The larger the area between horizontal lines, the more impactful that exact process drift. On the other hand, the vertical lines on the drift map show the identified process changes. They show the exact dates where process drifted the most. Next, in a folder graphs produced detailed, those horizontal clusters are ranked from the most changing one to the most stable. The higher the rank, the more behavior change. Following that rank, we can choose and explore drift charts, as they clearly show the pattern of change a long time. Let's look at one of the drift charts. This one shows a lot of behavior change. The most notable changes are represented with vertical lines. Instead, this shows four definite spikes of change. Now we can go ahead and find exact change that happened. The changes are represented by declare specifications that can be found in the constraints folder. Let's open that file. This drift has only two constraints. While you can consult our paper in order to get more information about declare specifications, we can look at the drift chart and in time of its peaks, these constraints on the left were holding. They mean schedule intervention always had taken charge ticket executed immediately beforehand and otherwise in the other parts of the plot. Also before schedule intervention, the assigned seriousness activity was executed and no other schedule intervention occurred in between. If we now compare this result and the result from the process discovery, we realize that now we are able to pinpoint exactly when in time there were some particular differences and explore that. Well, we can get even more insights from the data set at hand. To explore other options to interact with a tool, you can pass help argument to our script. Let's try to change one of the main parameters of the tool, that is the granularity of the visualization. Our tool relies on extracting information from all parts of the log, taking into account small time ranges. You decide how fine granular results are. The smaller the window, the more precise place of the drift. But with two small windows comes compromise of stability of our tool. Let's make big size of the window and see how that affects our algorithm. One can see how less precise the results on the right are. That will affect basically all analysis. Refer to our paper to get more details on that. Uh, we can also do cosmetic changes to the graph. For example, varying the color of the gradient. Look at the color parameter and choose the one you like. So, to summarize, to get an insight with our tool, one should first explore the drift map to gain the overview of the drift situation, then look at the rank of the drifts and check the when and exactly what was different. If it still didn't lose you here, what about going hardcore and try our tool on your machine? Head to GitHub to find our tool. In case your laptop satisfied all technical requirements, just open a terminal and copy these lines there. The rest, hopefully, will work. <laughs> Thank you for watching our video. In case you have ideas for collaboration or a chat, contact one of our authors.